Another uh, playlist going through uh, the fossils of the Cenozoic era uh, goes through the condylarths and their descendants. Uh, that would include deer and buffalo and camels and goats. Um, but of the even-toed artiodactyl descendants of the condylarths, a group was skipped, the whales. Now that's obviously odd because whales seem nothing like the, those other uh, artiodactyls, and and so obviously uh, this uh, bears, you know, this requires some explanation. Um, before that, however, uh, when the Cenozoic uh, began, uh, the Atlantic Ocean uh, had separated North and South. Uh, uh, North America from Africa. And there was a seaway known as the Tethys Seaway, which separated um, uh, Europe and Asia from uh, the remnants of Gondwana as it uh, broke up. Now, um, Africa was not yet fused to uh, the, uh, the Middle East and Central Asia. And India had been part of uh, the southern continent of Gondwana for the longest time. And so India's current location uh, as a part of Asia is a recent development during the, um, the uh, Cenozoic era. This Tethys Seaway um, is a site where many of the early air, uh, whale fossils are found. And so the idea that one of the early fossils is known as Pachycetus, and is known from Pakistan seems odd. But once again, that was the border of this Tethys Seaway. Um, uh, the sea levels uh, were uh, higher uh, during the early Cenozoic. And so there are whale, whale fossils from North Africa uh, where the Sahara Desert now uh, stands. And so this Tethys Seaway that existed at the beginning of the Cenozoic would close, um, but this region uh, was important in the evolution of whales. So it was, it was worth uh, mentioning at the outset. There are absolutely no whale fossils in the Precambrian, in the Paleozoic, in the Mesozoic, or in the early Cenozoic. So uh, the whales which we know uh, today, these are very recent additions to the biodiversity of our uh, planet. Most of Earth's history has passed without any whales whatsoever. So then where did they come from? Well, as um, the uh, mammals began to di diversify early in the uh, Cenozoic uh, era, uh, there were empty niches in uh, marine and aquatic environments because uh, the reptiles, which had adapted to life in the ocean, whether it be ichthyosaurs or plesiosaurs or even the mosasaur lizards, lizards which could be you know, 40, 50 feet long and live in the ocean, they were now extinct. And so uh, there were ecological niches which were vacant and one group of mammals adapted uh, to fill this niche. Now these mammals uh, apparently began with by four-footed primarily terrestrial organisms which began to spend more and more time um, around uh, aquatic uh, environments. And as I had said, Pachycetus is in this uh, group from uh, Pakistan. Um, and it uh, uh, was uh, bordering uh, the Tethys Seaway at uh, the time. There would be a long series of very gradual uh, changes uh, as these animals um, became squatter, so their legs became shorter, even though that they would be capable of supporting their weight on uh, land for quite some time. The nostrils would gradually move from the tip of the snout um, and, and move uh, farther back on the skull to where the blowhole is located um, uh, today. And these animals would uh, gradually uh, modify other parts of their body. So there um, were a number of whales, such as Remington Ocetus, uh, which once again still had both arms and uh, legs, and then Ambulocetus, whose name literally means walking whale. And so once again, becoming more whale-like, um, but still having four feet and still capable full of locomotion on land. So forms such as Pachycetus, that was the you know, animation how it began, um, would uh, be 
that gradually transformed into forms like ambulocetus. Once again, which would have been capable of locomotion on land, but no longer as adept at it. Um, so their limbs are shorter and their body is becoming modified to be better at uh, uh, swimming. Uh, just like, you know, animals like otters and beaver can walk on land, but they're much uh, more adept at uh, moving in the water. Uh, so to this group adapted to life in the water, their nostrils moving a little farther back on um, their heads. Now, they uh, were predators. And so just like those aquatic reptiles were you know, good at eating fish and other marine uh, life, so too these mammals uh, would have um, uh, been adapted uh, for eating fish and other uh, aquatic uh, life. Um, after forms like Ambulocetus, there was a family with a number of uh, early whales. All of these whales had both arms and uh, legs, um, including Rhodocetus, Georgocetus. Uh, Georgocetus is named for um, the province of Central Asia, Asia, uh, Georgia, the country there, as opposed to the state in North America. Myocetus, some of these are on display in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., hanging from the ceiling. Now, while they still had four uh, legs, for example, Rhodocetus, um, the hind limb formed a flipper, and so uh, it was a foot, um, but the bones were long and delicate and would not have been adapted to supporting the weight of this large animal on land, um, uh, but rather uh, would have been a uh, flipper uh, for propelling uh, this animal in uh, the water. The tail was becoming uh, modified uh, for a powerful uh, 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 swimming. Um, but once again, these were animals with four legs, and not only legs, but legs which linked them uh, to the artiodactyl descendants of the, uh, of the condylarts. And so um, there were a very gradual uh, transition. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. One of the fossils of Myocetus, um, I'm sorry, I'll go back there, uh, actually uh, was of a female um, with a, a fetus uh, inside and um, uh, indicating uh, that uh, they were uh, adapting uh, to give uh, birth uh, uh, and so uh, one of the fossils of myocetus actually preserved uh, a, a fetal skeleton inside a uh, female and the apparent position where the head is oriented towards uh, the pelvis would be the way that land mammals uh, give birth whereas uh, in modern mammals uh, or modern whales, the tail uh, is uh, leaves the female's body first. Otherwise, uh, the infant might not have enough time to arise to the surface and take its for, uh, first breath after its oxygen connection to the placenta is as lost. So this is a, a transition uh, where it is not uh, yet uh, adapted uh, to uh, giving birth underwater uh, the way that uh, modern uh, whales are. Um, not only were the limbs gradually adapting uh, to life in the water, but so are the uh, skulls. Uh, all of these early whales were predators, and so none of them had the baleen that most uh, large whales have uh, today, um, and that these uh, you know, teeth were adapted for grabbing fish and other uh, marine life. Um, the nostrils gradually moved back in uh, position. So the skulls became more elongated, uh, but the nostrils would gradually move back, uh, approaching the position of the uh, blowholes uh, today. And so as one uh, were to, you know, progress uh, from the early forms like Ambulocetus to Rhodocetus, notice the nostrils um, are uh, moved back uh, to Basilosaurus, which I will cover in just uh, a second. The skull is uh, larger, more elongated, uh, but the nostril is moving uh, further, uh, further back. Um, after the protocetids, uh, the um, hind limbs began to become uh, reduced. 
So there were uh, swimming whales, which had you know, prominent uh, hind limbs adapted for swimming, um, but that would begin uh, uh, to change while the hind limbs were still there in uh, smaller whales, such as Dorodon, or the large uh, whale uh, um, in the next video, Basilosaurus. Um, these hind limbs were uh, becoming uh, smaller and smaller. Uh, so they were still present, still had all of the bones uh, typical of limbs, uh, but now uh, were, um, uh, you know, transitional and approaching the uh, condition of modern uh, whales. So once again, there was a femur, a patella, a tibia, a fibula, tarsal bones, and toe bones. So this was a true leg, um, but it was becoming smaller and smaller and no longer functional for either uh, uh, swimming uh, to any appreciable degree and obviously not capable of supporting uh, body weight on uh, land. Um, Basilosaurus was a huge predatory uh, whale, which still retained, uh, even though its body was maybe uh, 60 feet long, um, still uh, retained a six inch long um, uh, remnant of, uh, uh, of limbs. Uh, here, so uh, this whale is known uh, throughout the world, including North America. And once again, uh, it's a tiny uh, uh, legs uh, would not have been uh, a useful uh, for uh, swimming or for um, movement on uh, land. Now, um, there are additional fossil whales uh, known. And so uh, among the artiodactyls, uh, we need to consider um, not just you know, the ones which would remain on uh, land, uh, but those which adapted to life in the, the water, like Ambulocetus. And as I had said, you can go to museums, such as the museum in uh, the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., and see uh, whales hanging uh, from uh, the ceiling. As I said, Rhodocetus had a hind limb where, uh, which uh, was adapted to be a flipper, but those narrow bones would no longer have been uh, useful in, um, in supporting weight on land. Although Basilosaurus had this tiny leg, it still had a femur, a patella, tibia, fibula, tarsals, uh, uh, metatarsals, and phalanges. So it was a true uh, leg. And, you know, and in that Smithsonian, you can see these tiny foot elements uh, from Basilosaurus in the uh, ceiling. Um, obviously, there are dolphins as well. Dolphins are small whales. Uh, there were some interesting uh, fossils of dolphins, including one that had a walrus-like uh, tusk, um, one which had a bony uh, snout. This is a, uh, a dolphin. Um, now, modern whales uh, still retain their front limb. And if you were to look at the front limb of a modern whale, um, it's an arm. So there's the shoulder, there's a humerus, radius, and ulna. There are carpal and uh, metacarpal bones. So th the front flipper is and um, uh, an arm. Um, uh, and we know from the stories of whaling days uh, that uh, leg elements can still be present. Uh, so they're not bone, um, but whales in the blubber of their sides could have cartilage remnants of a femur, and in some cases, a femur and a tibia. So the first whales had hind legs, and even modern whales can have cartilage remnants of their uh, hind uh, legs. Now, some whales still have teeth, like dolphins, killer whales, sperm whales. Um, some whales have modified their teeth. So the narwhal has one elongated uh, tooth in, uh, in males, uh, whereas other whales, uh, they uh, lack uh, teeth as adults. They do form tooth buds as embryos, showing that their ancestors have teeth. Um, but then instead of teeth which allow them to, to bite prey, they now have these plates of baleen. Baleen is made of keratin, the same protein which makes up you know, skin and hair and nails. Um, and baleen then uh, allows them to filter water. So they'll take in water and then be able to filter out you know, tiny shrimp-like animals like krill. And so the world uh, existed without whales. Uh, for most of its uh, history. 
Uh, the earliest whales were modified artiodactyls. Um, so the condylars are not only the ancestors of uh, bison and cow and deer and camels and giraffes, but also of whales, an early lineage of uh, artiodactyls, which adapted uh, to life in the ocean, replacing you know those great marine uh, lizards or, or reptiles, um, which um, which became extinct. 